Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to our Insider Insight Show. I'm honored to have back with me someone I consider a very dear friend and someone who I believe is the most courageous person in Hollywood. Actually, and one of the most courageous people in our country, John Paul Rice. John has been on our radio show and on our, on our uh, YouTube shows and on our Insider Insight shows a number of times before. He is a huge fan favorite, and, and John is, um, as I said, has distinguished himself as being an incredible, not just mentor, but, but leader of the freedom movement and of what's right for every child, not just in our country, but the world, and for their rights. He has sh shown a light and shined a light on, on an issue through his films and also out of the film area in, in him just being an articulate spokesperson of what's happening with the human trafficking issues, pedophile issues. It's a very difficult subject. It's a subject few people want to talk about. But John Paul Rice has the courage to do so. For those of you not familiar, not familiar with John Paul, a little background. He became, began his film career in Georgia working on Remember the Titans starring Denzel Washington and We Were Soldiers starring Mel Gibson. In 2001, John landed a position at the Los Angeles Film Finance Sales and Production Company, Senator International, which later became Mandate Pictures, led by industry veteran Joseph Drake from Hunger Games. You may have heard of him from Juno, The Grudge, Harold and Kumar. Under Joe's leadership, John developed an interest in producing independent feature films. And in 2008, John Paul formed No Restrictions Entertainment with filmmaker Edgar Michael Bravo. We've had Edgar on our platform as well as a guest. They produced these critically acclaimed films, One Hour Fantasy Girl, The Magic Stone, Memories of Lost Love, Mark's Secret to Eternal Life, and A Nice Quiet Life. But then in 2018, their team released their sixth project in about 10 years time, entitled A Child's Voice. We have delved into this issue a number of times on this platform. It's a supernatural thrill about a runaway teen who answers a child calling out for help and is sent on a journey to find human trafficking network around the child's killer. All six films tell bold, authentic, real-life stories of survival in the face of uncertainty with a hope and love for a better world. Their team is now launched to another project, their seventh feature film, Game Day. It's my honor to welcome back John Paul Rice. John Paul, welcome back to the Insider Insight Show and the Operation Freedom Platform. Hey, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's great to see your face and have your friendship. Oh, it's, it's an honor to be a friend of yours as well, John Paul. So let's talk about your the, the latest work, a Game Day. It's in production now. Educate our listeners about Game Day. And then I want to get back to Child's Voice because there's been a lot that has transpired since the last time yeah. we spoke. Yeah, so Game Day is our, our seventh feature in about 11 years. This is a departure from maybe our six previous movies where we delved into some darker subjects. This one is about family. Mm -hmm. And it's a coming-of-age drama with comedy, so a dramedy, about a 50-year-old man who's the patriarch, father, husband of an Italian-American family that is gathered together on a Sunday afternoon to watch their most hated rival, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> They're Philadelphia Philly, uh, Philadelphia Eagle fans. Uh -huh. And the, the movie takes place over the course of the, the day in four quarters, but it's really it's first about the family, football, and then the football rivalry, which is also reflective of the family rivalry. And um, we wanted to tell a story about the truth rising in a family that the glue begins to come undone because everybody's been living in denial of what's been going on and no one's really actually fulfilled their life and what they wanted to do. But underneath that is this love and care for each other to tell the truth. And once the truth is told and is expressed in very explosive ways, people can begin to go and live freely the life that they truly want to at peace with themselves and with each other. So 
Um, we're really excited about this because not only is it one of the best scripts, it is the best script that we've done, most complete script that we've ever done, which is not to diminish our previous movies, but the richness of these characters. We're doing everything from multi-generational grandparents, parents, children, ex, ex-wife, <laughs> um, and mothers, uh, you know, the in-laws. And what really makes it whole is the spirit of love that's underneath it. Once we get through all the dark crap, that the secrets of the family, the secrets and the, and the lies or the denials that we told ourselves, there's a really beautiful, beautiful um, transition into a story that reflects what our own stubbornness may cause in the long term and that loss of of joy and pleasure that we can truly have in our lives once we once we reach out and start telling the truth so um the response to the script's been overwhelming from actors to crew and people that shouldn't even care and the it there's something there for everybody and it's it's a movie that right now in this time, I think is absolutely necessary because it's in such a divisive time for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. It gives us the opportunity to look at ourselves through humor, through tragedy, and come out through on the other side. And it's a movie that Hollywood hasn't really done in a long time about family. Maybe the last time was Little Miss Sunshine in 2006. But really, that's kind of like the bridge between ordinary people from 1981, 80. And Little Miss Sunshine. It's that's that's these are the kind of stories that we haven't been telling. And I wanted to do something that not not as a throwback, but as a, something that's very contemporary right now. And the release day. Well, when's a Re planned release? Twenty twenty one. I would imagine in the fall of twenty twenty one. Because we we're we're in pre production right now. We're still raising some of the money. We're doing a GoFundMe for some of the additional funds. Uh, we are putting, like like I have described before, we take the money that we've earned from our previous film, and once we pay off the investors, we, we then put that money into the next movie. So Edgar and I take, you know, like when people buy our movies off of Vimeo, uh, we, we take that profit and we reinvest it into our next movie because we're not part of the Hollywood studio system. Right. We, we rely on our fans and, and the people that's, that love and support our content to keep Keep us, help us make more. Well, um, and, 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 and John Paul, what you and Edgar do, you would never be supported in this day and age by the Hollywood, let's call it the syndicate, because you take yeah. on very tough issues and issues that Hollywood not just doesn't want to shine a light on, Hollywood wants to bury. And yes. in particular, let's go back to your, your previous work that we've delved into a number of times, A Child's Voice. Mm -hmm. Educate our listeners about A Child's Voice and what's been happening of late to suppress, to suppress the movie and the very important story and message it delivers. Yeah. So, so our movie, A Child's Voice, as you mentioned earlier, is uh, a supernatural thriller that deals in the world of human trafficking. And it's, it's a fictional story, so it's not a documentary. It's a fictionalized story, uh, but that was all based on research that we did in 2017, 2018. And it had to do with these networks of human trafficking, a bigger network, global, and of wealthy, the elite. This was before Maxwell, Epstein, any of that had been publicly disclosed. So, so we crafted a movie that was very intimate very, with a message of love behind it and an opening for all people to begin to see this, this issue with fresh eyes through, mm -hmm. through the art. And it wasn't for, you know, the truther community, because most of the people that had been researching it for years know the extensive, you know, how deep and dark it goes. But what we wanted to do was for people who didn't know anything about this, that they could see that not only was it about young children, not teenagers, but young kids uh, being traded, sold and bought. But it was also the satanic aspect mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. that we incorporated into the film, and that included the satanic ritual. It included uh, a, uh, an Im implication of the drinking of the blood of the child. And I know how horrible that sounds, but 
I just want you to know, and everybody who has seen it sees this, is that it's handled in such a delicate way that it doesn't throw it in your face so mm -hmm. hard that mm -hmm. you can't watch it. And again, this love story between the young boy and the girl is really at the crux of the whole thing. So what happened was this. Um, over the last several weeks, as your, your listeners will know, there was the Wayfair uh, story that came out you know, several weeks ago. And there was an increase in people looking up human trafficking. It so educate just, our listeners to those that weren't familiar with the Wayfair story briefly. Sure. So basically what happened is there had actually been numerous people investigating and Wayfair was just the latest where products sold on their website were at high, high rates beyond like pillows that were $10,000, uh, storage facilities that were ten. dollars $15,000, $8,000 outside of the, the normal market price mm -hmm. and, and listed with, I mean, with names of missing children mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. uh, these were verifiable. And so when people started digging and digging and digging, they were horrified that there were not just one or two, but dozens, if not hundreds of these items with different sellers and when people started speculating on this, they were saying, well, <clears throat> was it that Wayfair themselves was doing it? No, that was the conspiracy story that they spun within the first five to six, six minutes that it came out. What, what, it, what it said was looking at the corporate response from Wayfair, mm -hmm. I mean, you have millions of people talking about this online, and your response as a company is to come out and say, well, they were accurately priced, there was fair market value, and it, not even acknowledging the concerns right. of what people were talking about and that we were going to launch a full investigation to get to the bottom of it. There was none of that discussed. And that just as, as a company in this time when there's – Stories about Me Too to Epstein and all the connections and to the Clintons that your customer base, you have a growing customer base that is concerned about these issues, parents who buy off of this site. And you had, I'm not kidding you, millions of people who deleted that app off their, off their phone. There were people writing to the company, nothing addressed. It was all the standard corporate BS, you know, and then it just went away. Mm -hmm. Just got it. It just went away. So, so then people started looking up human trafficking. They were already looking it up even more so, but they started searching for human trafficking right. at a greater clip than ever before. This also, you know, they, they try to make it about QAnon. Uh, you know, that's, that's just, that's media pigeonholing it and calling it all right wing and, 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 and Nazi and everything else to just deflect attention away from the real issues. So between that and then we have Trump in the media saying to Maxwell, I wish her well, right? Yeah, right? Which for which the media wasn't talking anything about Maxwell until that moment. And he he created a moment of controversy, which I think was deliberate uh -huh. because they As knew. Do I. A couple of, yeah, because <laughs> they knew in a couple of days what was going to be released in the courts <clears throat> from the Guffrey testimony plus everyone going back and looking at the previous documents in Maxwell's testimony and deposition. So while all this is going on with our movie, there is an increase in the number of minutes streamed on Amazon's U.S. platform and U.K. platform and our other, other platforms. We're seeing an uptick in the interest and people buying and renting and streaming. It came that the director's daughter, Edgar's daughter, um, notified him and said, Daddy, I went to go share your movie because everybody's talking about human trafficking, and I shared the Amazon link, and nobody could watch it. It Ooh. said, this video has, uh, is unavailable in your area. I went online. I saw that. I went to our video dashboard. It had been unpublished in the U.S. and the U.K. They, they have these red flags, little warning signs. Yeah. I went in and looked at it. I've seen this before. I messaged to Amazon. They didn't get back to me. I messaged them again. They come back with a standard corporate message 
that basically said our selection choices change from time to time. <laughs> You're right. Listen to feedback from our oh. viewers who oh. may you know have complaints about your movie. And then, then they came back and, and cited some kind of arbitrary performance metric for which I don't have access to, right? Hmm. But here's the thing. That wasn't true because if that was true, the five other movies that we have, Child's Voice has been in our top three out of six that we have on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And over the last year and a half, we've had it on there for a year and a half. Now, all of a sudden, this increase in traffic goes up. They unpublish it. Then we go to the distributor. We find that it's been unpublished in up to 70 other countries wow. worldwide. Wow, Still wow, in wow. some countries, but in other countries, it's completely unavailable, completely blocked, and not searchable, Dave. You can't even search for it by typing in a child. Had your distributor Amazon. ever seen this before? Oh, yeah, they had. Oh, they have? Yeah. So, so they, they helped us get it on all these different platforms. And... And with Amazon, we had been in 70 countries worldwide. In English speaking, we were in Spain. We were in Mexico. Right. Uh, we had it in a lot of countries, and they just took it off on te technicalities. And the but distributor has seen another movie taken off before. Yes. Interesting. Yes, we had, so we had, um, in Germany, we had put up our first movie, uh, One Hour Fantasy Girl, which dealt with prostitution. Right, right. Yeah. Based on a true story. It's one of our best selling films yeah, right. over the last ten years. Uh -huh. Top performer. And they had taken that down under similar uh. a similar process before. I went all the way to Jeff Bezos. Really? I did. And I got a response from his assistant. And what was the response? It was the standard thing that um we look at, you know, this is a decision and this decision is final. We look at all you know, we take all customer feedback in. You know, it's the same, same, same thing, old, but yeah, it said yeah. we're not reversing our decision. Once it's unpublished, that's it. Do not resubmit it. And we just we said, all right, fine. We found another way to get it on. They took it off again. And um, <laughs> and now here's the other thing. They've taken off, Dave. They've taken off One Hour Fantasy Girl from international, all international platforms, still in the U.S., still in the U.K. for now on Amazon. They took off Memories of a Lost Love, which dealt with child abuse right. in the home. Right. This is probably one of the most powerful uh, films we've ever done because it's a slow burn, but when you get to the ending, it's just like it, it throws you for a loop, and it's, but it's so honest and true and, and very tragic and touching at the same time. And so what I looked at is I, I said we got... A Child's Voice, One Hour Fantasy Girl, and Memories of a Lost Love, all dealing with childhood trauma and, and from different angles and different, different storylines taken off. Now they're going after anyone who is doing movies about child abduction, mm -hmm. and they find out that you're not part of the orthodoxy. We had one friend, uh, Nicole Abbasino, who did uh, a film on child abduction, and it was going great. It was in the top five in some of these sites. And the moment she came out and did press and they found out that the filmmakers were Christian, Boom. Facebook deleted their page, they deleted their watch party, and they threw them out of the recommendations of any of their movies. Because, and it was a non-political film on top of it. Mm -hmm. So these people and what they're doing, and they're doing this to books as well, anything that deals with child sex trafficking, anything to deal with any, anything about involving children that shows a negative light that can be pointed to people in power. They are going around and they're taking those films down and they're censoring them, they're shadow banning them. So here's what I did. I went and I did a post on Twitter just with a screenshot saying how we had been censored. Mm -hmm. And within a day or two, it had thousands and thousands and thousands of retweets and shared all over social media because people were mad. Mm -hmm. And the confluence of events that occurred got me to just sit down. It was actually the day after we did our interview on the radio show. Mm -hmm. And I, I just set my little phone up here <laughs> and I went live on Instagram and I just wanted to talk to my 700 followers to, to, to get the word out that this is what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And what happened was a 38 minute video that um, I just let it rip, I guess. That's <laughs> yes, you did. Way. Well, you laid it on the line. 
I, I just laid it all out mm-hmm. there. I, I said, no, this is part of a bigger issue. I went through Hollywood, the banking industry, the media industrial complex. I called out everybody, but with open source information. And I just pointed everybody. I said, for the love of God, stop listening to these people because they're giving you divisive issues. And I said, the day that all of this stuff breaks, CNN, MSNBC, all of the major main lamestream media channels are ignoring it. And they're talking about John Lewis's funeral and Barack Obama versus Trump. And I said, all the bullshit. And, and it was just, it, it, I didn't know what I was doing, Dave. I mean, I, I did in one way, but I didn't know what was going to happen. The next. impact, the impact, because it was it was a happen. meteor. It was a meteor, a huge meteor impacting the Earth's crust. It it well, it got picked up um, really fast. I mean, I did send it to a couple of my friends, but again, the viral nature of this video. <laughs> yeah. I'll just tell your listeners, okay. I went from 700 followers on Instagram doing that one video to now 22,000, uh, Twitter to 11,000, uh, from 6,000 to 11,000. But this is not, it has nothing to do with me. What it struck was a nerve yes, it did. in the consciousness of so many people, not only in the industry, but it has now gone global on a super viral level that I could never have anticipated. That video has been downloaded, shared, replicated across all social media in all platforms that I can measure at least 20 million people have seen it now in two weeks and it continues we're getting now uh, a Mexican station or a Spanish speaking station that did a full translation of it Uh, it's now been viewed by half a million times just on that channel Uh, you can go to YouTube you can find multiple instances of it you can find multiple instances of it on Instagram my video alone on Instagram has been viewed over 280,000 times, um, and it just continues to be shared worldwide. The thousands of messages that we've had that, you know, people praying for us, praying for our protection, uh, you know, that's great. It's, it's that there are survivors, the, the, the people, boys and girls, who what I, what I said in that, that video was to turn it from the darkness into the light and Mm -hmm. what, what we are, we're all children of God in the face of this darkness that we can come together on a unifying issue that protects all life on this planet, starting with our most precious and vulnerable and defenseless species of all. If we're not, these people do not see you as anything. You are nothing to them. That's right. Doesn't matter what they say to you. I called out Hollywood. I showed how they take these girls and boys. It's really, it's two sides of the same coin, guys. It's not about women. They want you to think it's only about women. It's not. They do this to young boys. And and if we're going to solve this equation, this equation that is a child abuse system Mm -hmm. that we've been living in, Mm -hmm. not just over here or over there, it's been inhabited by these people who have sown all of this crap into society. Mm-hmm. They really, truly have, and it's not human nature. This is not normal. This is not our natural state of being. This is, nobody wants to live like this. I, all I try to do is just practical, like nobody wants to live this way. Nobody wants to live the way the world is going right now. And what they're doing is they're creating these divisive issues in every single country Mm -hmm. to keep us away from the one tenth of one percent who Mm -hmm. own and control the whole damn thing. And they're trying to make it about white people and black people and brown people and women and this and that and this and that. And then we just get into a contentious warfare with each other, arguing online, creating all this negative energy and depressing people and demoralizing them further. This is how the Luciferian agenda works. It doesn't require your knowledge or belief in it. Just know the equation is this. They do this crap to kids. What do you think they're doing to you? Point of fact. That's that's it. Yeah. That's all Bottom it is. line. Bottom line. Bottom line. Right. And our love for our kids and each other is what makes their whole illusion fall. That's exactly it. 
And the, the and the thing that I wanted to bring it around, which is what I talked about in that issue, that that video was bigger than Hollywood. It had to do with how we begin to heal this trauma for which has been not only done to us as children, but has been continually surrounding us and feeding us all this crap to make it even worse. Life's hard enough, right? Mm -hmm. We don't need this extra layer on top of everything to make it that much more difficult to be able to solve problems and have real dialogue, real conversations about where we go to move forward. We only have the truth left, Dave. Mm -hmm. There's nobody coming off that bench unless they're extremely charismatic, but that makes it even more dangerous. There's nobody coming off that bench that can save this. This is not a political issue. Mm -hmm. It's not a... It's not a corporate issue. It's a human, human. issue. It's right. us. It's human rights. We are the people that have to fix this problem. It, the people who created this problem are not capable of fixing it. They don't have that ability. They just don't. It's, it's, not, it's, not, in the, it's not in the formula. It's not in the equation for them. So that video went viral. People are coming left and right, coming to us, thanking us. People in the industry are thanking us. People who sit in positions of power, and I've gotten messages from them and said, between now and next year, you're going to be seeing more insiders coming out from all of these institutions. Hollywood next year, I guarantee you, it will be more visible than it is today in terms of the separation and the split. It's already underway. In the, in the industry, more people today are aware of the falsehoods of Hollywood mm -hmm. than ever before. They were confused and bamboozled during the Me Too movement, thinking mm -hmm. that the arrest of Harvey Weinstein and, and all the changes, but I just tell people, I like, look at the open source information, go into the LA Times last year and you'll find out that there was a girl after Me Too and after Time's Up, which is created by CAA. After all of that, they, they had a girl who was sexually uh, assaulted on a set. Mm -hmm. This is in the LA Times. This is not like conjecture or somebody's speculative uh, conversation or gossip. This girl had to retell her story at least two dozen times over six months before she even got an answer. Mm -hmm. In the face of Me Too, mm -hmm. in, after all of this stuff has come out. Why? Because she's a nobody. Yeah. This is a fake. Look, I, all I tell people is like, if you look at like Me Too and what messaging for young, the, you know, modeling, all the messaging, like except everything at 100% face value. And over here you have Cardi B and her new music video, WAP, which is an acronym for something else that people can go look up the lyrics for and tell me how that isn't pornography. And then she's having an interview with Joe Biden. No, yeah, it was the, it, he, she was hand, oh, no pun intended. She was hand selected by Joe Biden to be the one person to interview him. It's all that's it, not just a coincidence, a John, John Paul. You know that's not just a coincidence. No, this is a freak show. Right? They are using they're in, in your face. This is an in your face move. What they're doing. So for the people that that like look back in horror and go, how can they do that? What these people have done through the television, through the music industry, through the entertainment industry, through the media, they have programmed their mm -hmm. fans. Mm -hmm. They're programmed. They are. And I tell people, I said, go look on the videos, on the music videos, underneath in the comments, and you will see 90% of them celebrating this as feminism, celebrated as black body empowerment, uh, that that you know they 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 write the cover story on CNN. They'll have a discussion between two people. I mean, they create endless media and propaganda from everything to keep you away from the real issues. So what they'll do for you and I is we'll be thrown on right wing watch. They'll say, oh, you know, Christian conservative, this, that, and the other, moralists, on and on and on, hypocrites, on and on and on. To all to insulate their fan base from looking at the reality of what's being sold to them. That's right. It is to contain them. 
And what it does worse, though, Dave, is that it makes a lasting impression in the, in the fan's subconscious mind. And their identification, their persona is, is meshed it's a mesh. It's totally, it's totally like everything that Cardi B says and does, the kids begin to imitate. That's right. And she becomes part of them. So when you go after Cardi B, you're going after them. Exactly. And, and that's their formula. That's yes. what this, whatever you want to call it, globalist syndicate, deep state, whatever, new world order. This is exactly what they've been doing, John Paul, for many decades. Yes. It's just gotten worse. And, and it's, <laughs> I'm just trying to tell people, I'm trying to get out ahead of this because what's going to happen is people are going to see it more clearly as mm -hmm. things begin to unfold. But as that mask comes off, it's going to become more satanic in mm -hmm. its core. It's, it's just, and, and the cognitive dissonance among the fans with that and, and, the, and the realities of it mm -hmm. is going to become more intense. Yeah. At, at a certain point, though, it is going to, it's going to peak and crest, but there's going to be a lot of carnage, you know, because this is about the, not only about, you know, there's a political expression to it and there's a global expression to it, but there's also the human toll on the mind because this is a battle for the mind. Oh, it absolutely is. So if people wanted to watch that post, that 38 minute post you put up on Instagram, where can they, where can they find it? So if, if they were to go to my Instagram, they'd go to no restrictions. Okay. It's the first, it's on my Insta, uh, Instagram TV, but it's my latest post. Um, if you search by my name on YouTube, John Paul Bryce. Uh, the odds are you'll find something bit shoot. It's on there. Uh, you'll, you'll find it's a 38, it's a roughly a 38 minute clip. Um, and and I, I those are the places that I know it exists and Facebook too, but Facebook is shadow no. banned. Oh yeah, no, yeah, F forget it. That, that I, no, they 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 deep six stuff like you can't believe. So John Paul, when you look at that thirty eight minute uh, Instagram post you did, the video, yeah. In your mind, when you watch it back through, the most hard hitting points, the people that you brought up that you really wanted to. Put the finger on the most yeah who were they and what were the most hard-hitting posts from your perspective i i mentioned that edge.org which was the billionaire club that jeffrey epstein uh helped finance and was listed as a as a name on there if you go back i was telling people if you go back in the wayback machine you can find all sorts of people on there that you don't see today I just told people to go to edge.org and then look up under people, look under G. And Bill Gates is right there. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos, if you look under B, is right there. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're taking medical advice from a guy who associates himself with a pedophile. pedophile. Fauci is associated with Gates. When you say, well, guilt by association, no. Guilt by partnership over long periods of time. Right, right. You no, have this wasn't to work yeah, with other people. Right. This wasn't just having a cup of coffee. No, and this wasn't <laughs> a photo. So I, I pointed to the New York Times, which showed that Bill Gates had a deep relationship with Jeffrey Epstein that 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 went over years and decades. And they talked about creating a hundred million dollar charity for women. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, give me a break. Right. So when I, when I pointed it out, I pointed out ABC News. Mm -hmm. I pointed out that, you know, that, that this was Amy Robach. And I said, I said, anybody who wants to see who these people are, go and look at her because she had no remorse for the victims. Her moment of frustration that they put a... Yeah, well, a, yeah she didn't get her piece on TV, out. right? She didn't get she it was, on... Yeah. She was frustrated that she didn't get to break that story. You see that in her face. Right. It wasn't about it. it wasn't about the victims and all the victims that came after they deep sixed it. It was about she didn't get her time in the sun breaking the story. And she still works for him today. Oh, of course. Right. So it's like she if she had any integrity, she would have walked out that day and said, I can't work here anymore. This is disgusting what you all are covering up right. so we can have access to the royal family. Yeah. She didn't say that. She didn't have to. It's what she didn't say that spoke volumes mm -hmm. in the face of facts that we now have. And I, I, I mentioned Weinstein. Mm. I said, go look at the Daily Beast and you'll see that Jeffrey Epstein had a pipeline 
into Hollywood through Harvey Weinstein. Of course, I'm just giving you the cover story because there's so much more to that with Mossad and, and, and everything else that was going on there. And, and again, I tell people, like, they're like, no, it's about young girls, you know, teenage girls that got paid. And it, it, yes, it's bad and all that. It's like, no, you have 40 to 50 million people in this country who watch porn and they're watching, you know, below age and 18 years old and young women in their 20s. OK, that's acceptable to 40 to 50 million people in this country. When you get down to the single digit age kids. For which. I don't recommend people do it, but go look for yourself. And I pointed to the UN, mm -hmm. the UN, UNICEF's own statistics, 40 mm -hmm. million people human tra trafficked around the world every year, 5.5 million children, most of whom don't live past age seven and eight. And I said, where, how is that? I was saying that they sacrifice kids. How do seven and eight year olds get murdered in a trafficking system, if it's only about, I mean, it's as horrible as you can imagine, but it's, it's, if it's all about sex, it's all about labor, all about the, they are killing these kids. That is a fact. Those aren't the same 5.5 million going every year. And I know that if this became public and the depth and the horror of it all became like, like you'd be ripping off a scab, the untold traumas. You have beautiful, we need the, the most beautiful and loving women and men in this world to come forward. You will, it's like you, Dave, when I knew you were true, and not because I didn't think you were, but when I knew everything about you was the day that you told me, and I read in that book, that you prayed to God that you would die, that he would take you instead of your own child. Mm hmm those are the people that we need, the family, the, the parents who will die for their kids. They're the strongest people mm -hmm. we have, and they don't know it because they've never been they've never been told that some of them just naturally love. But that's those are the people that in this broken world, those are the people that hold this whole damn thing together. And it has nothing to do with whether they're rich or poor. I've seen women on the streets of L.A., probably illegal immigrant doesn't matter they're they're there with their beautiful children and they love them and they have nothing right that you and i have that's right and yet they have this beauty and they're looking at that little baby boy and that little boy is so lucky to have a mother who who will doesn't see him as a problem mm -hmm. as doesn't a liability see as a doesn't see them as a liability or something that could be bought or sold that's right and <laughs> the other side of this equation, though, is that all of those people who have walked through the darkness mm -hmm. into the light, you are the most powerful people as well, because right. you have a lived experience in this time that you can share and teach others how to fish and nourish and feed themselves so that they can get better as you get better. This is not a one one way equation. It's everybody does their part. I've got all, you know, I've got my childhood issues. You've got yours. Everybody has them. But if we are to awaken from this illusion, mm -hmm. it is going to take more than just getting rid of the bad people. Right. When, I, when, I, when I say this, I'm talking about now both here and going forward. If we do not heal ourselves, if we do not begin to heal this world, what, and using our creativity and, our, and the truth and love, we're going to be rolling the dice with technology greater than nuclear weapons that exist today and going forward in the hands of a few people who could have had horrific childhoods. Yeah. And if we ignore this issue, which is a self-reflecting issue within ourselves, we're going to be in this same position, possibly worse down the road, even with our best intentions. You cannot kill, we cannot kill and murder our way out of this just by going against the bad people. That's, they are, look, Satan, as these people worship them, doesn't require you to believe in them, worship him to, in order to do their bidding. They just have to trick you away from what you are. That's right. 
and in, in your mind, look, <clears throat> when I talked about this in the video, I mentioned briefly that the reason why they do this thing to children is because children are the closest thing we have to God in the manifested form, in pure consciousness, unaware of itself, in the present moment. You just look at a baby, and if you believe that baby has evil in it, in, inherently there's something wrong with you, mm -hmm. because we put it there. We put that evil into that kid. And I, and I said, okay, fine, you want to believe that they're 2%? Fine, I'll give you the 2%. I'm talking about 98 to 99% of these children born, 7.8 billion of us on this planet are born from an eternal, loving creator of heaven and earth that does not require a religious belief. I just want wholeness to come from humanity and lift us up out of this darkness through love that is not going to be won by the hatred because i'll tell you what they're going to give you everything they got in order to sow chaos and destruction and pull out all the people into their crap so that they can distract everyone away from their crimes and hopefully get power back i don't think they're going to win but either. it's going to be our response to that that's right that ultimately is going to tell us what future we're going to go into and what kind of world we're going to create that is not about right versus left or the old paradigm. It's gone. It's over. It has no more juice. And so your creativity and people ask me, well, what can I do? You're already doing it. Whatever you're doing right now, you're already doing it. And you just keep building from there. You have to discover and know for yourself, not all the horrors of the world, if you wish to go into them, but the beauty of the world and what you can contribute to. And every single child, every single child in this world that you give love to, you don't realize what trajectories you are changing mm -hmm. in their long-term right. future. These kids, if you study Hitler, if you study serial killers, what you're finding is perfect psychopaths who sought love from their mother and father when they were born and were abused on such a level to an extreme degree that it created that reality, that psychopathic reality. I, I tell people, read Alice Miller's book, For Your Own Good. It's got Hitler's youth documented in there to a T, and you, parallel, you put that right next to his adult life, it's a parallel. Mm -hmm. If you look at Andrew Cunanan, American Crime Story, Murder of Gianni Versace, which is on Netflix, one of the most brilliant pieces of mm -hmm. art that's mm -hmm. out there on this subject. You watch all eight or nine of those episodes, you will come away with a greater understanding of why he killed those five people, because what his father did to him, he was seeking the love of his mother and father in those men, and when they could not, when he himself was messed up, but they couldn't deliver in his mind, he murdered them because he was rejected by them. And then at the very end, which I'm not going to ruin the ending, but it gives you the exclamation point for the one person that abused him the most, and he could not and would not accept that truth. This is where we're at. We have to, we have to get whole and come together and stand up in the face of this darkness that's surrounding us, because if we don't, we're going to be extinguished by them. If they get power ever again, doesn't even matter if it's now in an election or in the future, right. they gain power, these sociopaths get mm -hmm. power back again, they're going to come at us like you would not believe. You think it's bad now no, it's only until gonna... they have power. That's this exactly. is when they don't have power. John Paul, if uh, I took this interview, if we cut it off right now, and uh, I showed it to John Paul Rice in uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. What would John Paul Rice in 2010 say about the guy who's looking at right now? After listening to the last 50 minutes, 40 minutes. I, I don't think he'd recognize him. I really don't. I, I think he would have he would have thought, well, that's that's kind of, you know, like where where did where did that come from? And more importantly, who is that guy I'm seeing? You know, like that doesn't look like me. I mean, I, I, I mean that in the sense that I, I was already following this path, Dave, but I was following it unaware of right. where I was going. That's right. So, so it's like if you had told me, you know, three years ago 
that this is where I'd be, I would have thought, I mean, is it possible? Sure. But I couldn't see that guy. I couldn't see where I, where I was going to end up and that, I mean, it's not even about the video or anything else. I'm just talking about my state of mind and where I'm at today versus where I was even two years ago. And it has nothing to do with just the knowledge that I have. It has to do with the, the internal work that I've done. Mm -hmm. I didn't see, I didn't see, I wanted it. I wanted to have that, that feeling inside and, and all of the, the, the love that I've been able to express and experience with, with, with the other stuff too. But I, I look at it and I just say this, I didn't see a future. I, I lived, I mean, we don't have to get into it, but, but I lived in a, in a pretty dark place inside in spite of how overall I wasn't a wicked person. I was never a wicked person. Mm -hmm. um, but I never saw a future because I was living in the past. Right. I truly was. I was living in the past and it, it was my identity. It really was my identity. And now I understand so much how child abuse has such a hold on people and it creates the reality and their perception of it such to the point that it like you look outside at the world and you see all the ugliness and and you and you go, I'm gonna go fight it. And really what you're doing is you're you're not dealing with yourself first. And and you have to come from a loving place. If you're gonna if you're gonna be a warrior, if you're gonna be a fighter, if you're gonna be a creator actually rather than a force for destruction you need to be in a loving place you mm -hmm. can't be in a hateful place to do that because sure. you're going to end up becoming the very thing you hate when you you didn't be unaware of that fact mm -hmm. and that's where i was headed i was i was with i could see myself dave if if i hadn't changed course years ago and become aware i would be right there with those kids in chaz mm -hmm. i would have mm -hmm. because and, and what they don't tell you about those kids in Chaz, which is not a condemnation about them, but I know people who lived up there who said all of those kids were kids that were living in the park because their parents threw them out. Not because they were bad kids. The parents were bad, and the kids were fighting, and it was a horrible environment at home. And so these kids were homeless as teenagers, a lot of them. And it, it's what I talked about in that video. I said, you know, Human traffickers, what they do is they'll come in and they'll offer those kids something. Oh like yeah, they're drugs, the they're the they're the money. They're the easy right. prey. They're easy prey because they 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 have very little at home. They don't have well, a strong family unit right. and a structure. And Ghislaine Maxwell has has spoken about this. That that's where she would do her best and easiest recruiting. She has to go to the trailer park, right. even in West Palm Beach, Florida, and she would she just go there and. What I quoted in that, in the in the video was her response to them when one of the ladies asked her, "What's going to happen to these girls?" She said, "They're nothing. They're trash." Right. I mean, it's and and she justifies it with how she can help them advance their career by <laughs> right, right. giving sexual orgy, right. massage, whatever to make more money. This is they're just they're just dirt. They really believe this. They they're just. They're, they're not lying to you. No, they're when not they're saying these things. No, they're not. So, but John Paul, what's uh, let's end it on let's end this on your take on where it's going to go with Ghislaine Maxwell. Yeah. So there's more that's coming out. There's dripping out today. This morning there was. Um, I just wanted to say on Vice, this was August 18th, 8:55 uh, p.m. Old newspaper clipping claims Epstein and Maxwell party with Australian billionaires. And this was in 1995 with uh, Lindsay Fox. But there's, you know, of course, there's going to be a lot of denials. I think this is just to seed it in other countries. They're going to keep getting this out in more and more. Um, what you're going to see is this. Um, Hollywood is doing its part right now to uh, make it look like there's a you know a problem with Ellen's show for which there always has been. Yeah, that's and no new news, is it? I mean, it's not new news. Yeah. Everybody knew her reputation, how cold and mean she was. Yeah, that was a con uh, from who the very beginning. These producers were how they how they um, you know uh, you can read all the details. The, the first cover story was the racism and the the yeah, yeah, sexual yeah. harassment. Yeah. It actually had to do more with these these men that were getting blowjobs and handjobs at parties from their own interns and 
you know, creating a hierarchy of basically sycophants mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that they could keep their whole thing going. <clears throat> Oprah Winfrey, um, we've talked about her before, John of God, Weinstein, Peter Nygaard, you know, she celebrated these men. <clears throat> what she's doing right now is the Hearst publication. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot the gentleman's name. I think his last name is, uh, I think it's James Young. James mm -hmm. Young. The president of Hearst Magazine is stepping down because of, you know, again, sexual misconduct in the workplace. That includes pornography mm -hmm. that he's done and probably worse. These are all cover stories, guys. Um, Oprah's Magazine has gone down as well. They've, co you know, because of the print, because of COVID-19, all, all this BS, you know, the, the decline in her magazine. Um, but here's the telling <coughs> sign. Oprah's out there doing the Oprah conversation and she's talking about how poor white people have a greater advantage than black, black wealthy people. Uh, not speaking anything about the fact that a powerful white man who ran her company at Hearst Magazine had just stepped down because of sexual harassment against women. Right. Okay. So all of this is coming to a head where Hollywood is going to do its part. Tom Hanks, they're giving cover stories to everybody. But what's really going on is if you look at what's actually happening in resignations around the industry, they just had one yesterday, the head of Universal. Right. You know, that guy stepped down again because of a, because of an affair. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> it's like right. this is not, you know, they came out with a statement saying this is not consistent with our, our company's policy. Whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. We have the CEO, of Mc, the former CEO of McDonald's, too. Right. 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 And so so basically, yeah, it, it's just they're doing everything they can to deflect from this. It's not going to matter because what ultimately is going to end up happening is there's going to be people going to jail mm -hmm. and those people are going to be arrested. They're going to uh, discover that they were doing things with kids or involved First, it's going to be the involvement with Maxwell. I personally think and I don't know if you've said I haven't, you know, speculated on this, but. Because you don't have any kind of arrest picture, I think Maxwell has actually been working with him for the last year. And I, and I, I and agree. Once Jeffrey, and we talked about this on your show one time, once Jeffrey Epstein was out of the picture, it gave the lawyers and the prosecutors full access to all the evidence because he couldn't object to it. That's right. So, so he, you know, they got what they needed from him, but she's the real, she's the nexus of the whole damn thing. And it has nothing to do with, just her being a handler of him yeah. has to do with all the intelligence that right. she was involved in yeah. and entrenched with in every industry. They tried to spin this, John Paul, as you well know, that Epstein was was manipulating Maxwell and Maxwell was kind of the underling. It's the exact opposite. Yes. yes. She is no. the nexus of this. She's the nexus. She She's the one who her and her two sisters – created border mm -hmm. control software mm -hmm. was proprietary that she went to every major nation and in, had it installed. And what that did was it enabled them to go in and delete flight logs and records. That's right. And surveillance tapes and videos to make people disappear. Mm -hmm. People that flew into that country, they could make them disappear. Would not, would not know that they were there. They had no record of them. What does that mean? Or There's if kids were being transported across international b boundaries, guess what? That gets, that gets deep sixed. Yep. Imagine port port security as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's so big, Dave. It's like, I don't think Americans will know the full story until mm -hmm. the very, very end after everything has been said and done because the horror of the reality, I mean, we see chaos now. If people knew that we were all under the gun and, and no. we're still not completely out of it, but we're, we're getting out of it, I think it would just create more chaos until the end. We, we, we will find out so much more about Maxwell. There's going to be books. There'll be movies. There'll be documentaries. Everything you're seeing now, WikiLeaks on steroids. This is not 2016. This is 2020. Mm -hmm. And the, the amount of research and knowledge and awareness that's going on and continuing to unfold in one to two years from now, we're going to be in a totally different time. Maxwell is the beginning actually not the end of this story because as one guy said um i can't remember his name i think it's adam housey said this epstein thing is like the foyer room in a mansion of yeah. 22 other rooms that's right 
That's right. And so what we're going to be learning over the next several years is the plot that these people not, you know, you've covered it. I've done a little bit my part. Everybody's doing their part, but it is so vast and so big and so multi-layered and contains enormous amounts of money goes into Wall Street and above it. Mm -hmm. um, it's their whole it's their whole system, their whole system of corruption being brought down and deconstructed and destroyed so that we can live in a free world where we decide what kind of we actually get to decide what we want to do as opposed to the false illusion of choice. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what it comes down to. Agreed. So so with Maxwell, um, and, I, and again, even if she's, quote, killed, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right. I mean, it, it means something symbolic to the victims, of course, yes, but it's it's everybody else that played into that. Everybody, all the money, all the control, all of the all of the agendas with technology to take us further away from humanity, whereas we can use technology to bring us back into humanity if we use it properly and wisely with the correct people running the industries who are not compromised and blackmailed. Last point. Did you find it odd about Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson moving to Greece? Well, when I looked into the law in Greece, they cl they classify pedophilia as a disorder, right? And not and not a um, not a crime. Um, I have been told by people that that is a cover story, mm -hmm. and we will find out, I think, in time if Tom Hanks has actually been arrested as opposed to escaped to Greece. Um, because everything that I've watched with Tom Hanks this last year tells me that there's way more to what's going on than just all of these stories. There's too many inconsistencies there. And when I look at what David Spade said about his concern during coronavirus, we need to know what's going on with Tom Hanks right. at all times. Right, right. We need to know because if he makes it, we'll all make it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I mean, and he wasn't being funny about it. He didn't no. qualify that joke. It no. was it was something that everybody was focused on Tom Hanks and his associations, Stephen Bing, which mm -hmm. is, you know, the gentleman that right. who, who committed took suicide. A, who, yeah, took a, a walk off of his apartment or his because condo of complex. And his depression. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, he was Elizabeth that, Hurley's baby daddy. He was good right. friends with Bill Clinton, said, I believe, on the Clinton Global Initiative. He's involved with Playtone. He's involved with Shangri-La. Playtone is Tom Hanks' company. Shangri-La was the company that financed uh, the Polar Express with Tom Hanks. This is not like these people are not just in business with each other. They have relationships, it's friendships. Mm -hmm. uh, at that level, when you're at the A level, you're not just a work for hire. Right. You're... You're involved in the day-to-day -day management, and of course, we can get into the what would be considered con conspiracy of it with the CIA and the military intelligence and the history of that. And Jay, I point anybody who wants to know more about that, go to Jay Dyer. He is that guy is like a, a, a subject matter expert on Hollywood esoteric, satanic ritual, cult, cult programming for over decades. He can take you back in the 1950s and show you that they were already starting to do it. Um, but yes, Hollywood as we know it today, is done, um, both financially and in the brand. And as that, that train rolls forward, we're going to see more and more, and there's going to be new artists and new talent and new stories emerging. But it's going to be, they're going to double and triple down on everything that they've got with the wokeness and the, and the political messaging. Um, but such to the point, they're going to destroy their own industry because nobody's going to want to watch their product. And the majority of people who work in the industry can't work anymore because they're doing this racial diversity BS, mm -hmm. um, which is actually, I mean, however you want to look at this, I'm a compassionate guy and I understand what they're trying. Well, if I were to take at face value what they're trying to do, I understand it. But what they're doing is they're weaponizing and, and discriminating in their industry, an industry that if you speak about Epstein or Maxwell in Whoa. public, you're going to be blacklisted. That's right. Period. So let's just get that out of the way. Political messaging aside, this is the pre the 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 the, the main issue that's going on here. Right. You can't talk about that.
you know, you can't talk about it because it's a multi-billion dollar industry, but they're going to destroy themselves. They have no way out of this. No way out. So. John Paul, folks need to not only follow you, but they need to uh, get really get a good handle on your production. So yeah. A Child's Voice, how can they, since it's now been deep sixed from Amazon, What's the best way for them to watch A Child's Voice and share A Child's Voice with okay. others? Yeah. So we have it on a service called Vimeo On Demand. Uh, the way, the best way to find that link is a lot of people go to Vimeo.com and they can't find it. Go to our website at norestrictionsent.com. There you will find the link to the Amazon On Demand. You can rent it. You can buy it. Um, there are there are two other sites that I know. Uh, Horror Binge, if you're on Roku, you can watch it there. Uh, Film Ahoy is a British website, but you can either watch it with ads for free or you can pay a dollar. We get a portion of that. The greatest funds that, that, that come in are from Vimeo because it, it comes in monthly direct to the filmmaker. Vimeo takes its cut, but we get the get a good chunk of the profits. Um, the main thing I imply, import to, implore to everyone is this. If you see this movie and you like it, share it with somebody. Mm -hmm. I, I said in our video, I don't mind if you buy it, do things legally to uh, share your account with somebody else. I don't, need, I, don't, I don't need four or five of your friends to buy it. I mean, I'd love to. It's great. But really, it's a, the importance is the message to get it out there, get people seeing this, feeling something from it feeling like there is a there is a hope and there is chance in this world for love and to be able to have that message to help every child that you don't know out there. And so our website is the key place to go for that. And if you find me on social media, I have links to all of those, the, the film, the website's all there. And uh, no restrictions, ent.com. That's yep. the website. That's where everything is. Now, the folks that want to watch the 38-minute video, is yes. that on your website? It's not. Uh, it's on. It's on Instagram. Mm -hmm. My Instagram at no restrictions. And you, like I said, if you search by my name on YouTube or BitChute, you will find uh, that video somewhere. And it's it'll it it's about thirty eight minutes long. Yeah. Okay. So there's been, if there's they go been to, segments if, of it cut up, but that's that's the. If duration. they go to YouTube and they just type in the search bar on the top, John Paul Rice. Yep they'll at least get a version of it and they'll, they'll probably be a number of versions. Yeah, and put some kind of like John Paul Rice, Hollywood. I mean, I've got a lot of videos out there, but that's yeah. one that, that you can find everywhere. BitChute, um, you can probably find it on Twitter if you search my name, if they haven't completely shadow banned it because it's been shared so many times. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's... Um, uh... But yeah, uh, I just encourage people, if you, if, you, if you feel compelled to do something, watch that video because it gives you clear direction as to what you need to start doing in your local communities. This is a really important thing about local law enforcement with sheriffs, local city officials, getting them aware and putting them on notice, at least that you, you would like to see them bring some kind of program into the city or the place that you live that ensures that this crap will not happen and will not come into your town. That's really we need to choke this thing off. And you got a sheriff who's going to enforce the law. And the sheriff knows all of this stuff comes from child abuse. They see child abuse everywhere. It doesn't right. matter whether it's in a rich neighborhood or a poor neighborhood. They see child abuse everywhere. And these are the preconditions for all of this stuff being possible. So just understand your local community, your local action. And if you want to support individual people, I, I highly recommend to go to the individuals who are doing the 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 actual rescuing and helping and healing of kids versus these big 501c3s because they're controlled by the government and you just don't know where that money and that volunteership and awareness is actually going. And the individual organizations or small groups that you recommend, are there certain Yeah, ones? there's one in particular that I personally know. That's Ark of Hope for Children. It's Say it again. By a, Say it. Ark of Hope for Children. Ark of Hope for Children. Yeah, Blair Corbert, he... Um, He's a guy I know personally. I've known him for two, two and a half years. He wrote a letter of recommendation for our movie. Mm -hmm. This is a man who has put his own time, blood, sweat, and treasure in. Um, he runs his own website. He, he's got, um, he takes care of his wife. He works internationally and remotely with kids 
to get them out of their trauma. And he's worked with kids who have been programmed with satanic ritual abuse mm. and healed them. So any, you know, $5, $10, whatever donation, just go to his website, Ark of Hope for Children, look him up, read about it. And, and, and that's a guy, I mean, I just know him. He's, a, he's the real thing. There are other people out there as well, our rescue and others. I just, I just tell everybody, do your research and, and put your effort according to where you want. If you want to do a march, do a march. But, but the main thing is that what we do forward, going forward, is up to each of us. Not a leader, not a follower. It's up to you. Your reality, this world, all of us coming together and doing our part. John Paul, I'd like to thank you for everything you have done, are doing, and will do. You're an incredible freedom fighter. And frankly, you are an incredible savior for thousands, if not millions of children worldwide. You've put your life on the line to do this. You have been ostracized by what once was called the Hollywood elite that are going to be known as the, well, maybe Hollywood under wraps, if you will, uh, in a penitentiary somewhere down the line. I thank you, John Paul, for having that courage and for being a great role model for all of us about how to step up, how to do it the right way, and how to take on evil face to face on a daily basis. And I thank you for that. Hey, Dave, I appreciate you, your heart, and for giving us and this issue a platform because it is one of the defining issues of our time. I agree with you 110%. I wish, we'd, I wish we would be talking about something else, John Paul, but we would be doing a complete disservice to the people of our country and the world if we didn't have this discussion because it is occurring and uh, hopefully we can put an end to it by shedding more light on it. And I thank you for the light that you shed, the beacon of light. Folks, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Please share this interview, this information with anyone and everyone that you know. Watch a child's voice. It will change your life. It changed mine. It will change your life. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time.